Um. Command your morning devotion and prayer live at 5 o'clock a.m. Monday through Friday at WHLJ 97.5 FM in Valdosta and Moultrie, Georgia. Also on Facebook Live on Monday. You can also tune in by going to www.foxy97.com or call in 267-807-9611, access code 266-590. Evangelist Renee Sellers is your host. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, where my pastor is Pastor Samuel Sellers III. Ladies and gentlemen, we're live on this Think About It Thursday, and we're going to give each other something to think about. We're going to piggyback uh, off of Bible study on last night because it's still in our relationship series. So I'm going to do a little recap from Bible study on last night, Wednesday in the Word, just in case you missed it. Oh, God. We're thankful for today for another day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it this morning uh, we're excited to be coming to you live on WHLJ 97.5 FM Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie Georgia. You can also join us online this morning at Foxy F-O-X-Y 97.com and you can also join us on the conference call at 267 807 9611 access code um, 266 uh, we started uh, our study last night in Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to kind of deal with Ephesians 5 and a little bit of Ephesians 6 for the next couple of weeks in Bible study now. I don't know where we're going on Command Your Morning, but in Bible study, we're going to be dealing with uh, uh, Ephesians 5 and 6 for the next couple of weeks, um, and we're going to deal with submission. But on last night, uh, we dealt with verse number 2, but before Ephesians chapter 5, uh, our theme scripture for last night was verse no, coming from verse number two. But we're going to talk about that this morning. And before I begin, I'm going to ask Evangelist Paulette Griffin to open our broadcast with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we've come giving you glory, praise, and honor, and thanking you yet for another day. Thank you for the downsetting. Thank you for our uprising. Thank you for the opportunity to say, Lord, you're worthy of glory. You're worthy of praise. There is none like thee. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise and magnify thy name enough for all that you've done in our lives and what you're yet to do. We thank you for the Upper Room Outreach Ministries, Pastor Samuel Evangelist, Dr. Renee Sellers, for bringing forth Command Your Morning Prayer Line right here on Foxy, 97.5 FM. We thank you for each and every family, every ministry represented upon the line as we gather together from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Heavenly Father, to learn more of your word, that your word shall be planted upon good ground, to come up into fruition as you called it to be. We thank you, Lord God, for moving us, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord God, our peace, even in the midst of the storms and the battles, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we find peace in you, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for moving us, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord God, our peace, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, our provider, as you continue to meet every need in our life, both naturally and spiritually. As you still yet under the covenant that you've made with our forefathers, you've given us power to get wealth, that we shall never be broken another day in lives. For the left, the, the wealth of the sinner has been laid up for the just. We thank you and we praise you right now, Lord God, for being Jehovah Raphael, the Lord God, our healer, touching us from the very top of our head, even to the soles of our feet, going to the shinu and the mirror of the bone, bringing restoration, healing, and deliverance. Thank you for honoring our prayer requests, and Lord God, and thank you right now to attending for attending to our very cry and our call. Lord God, thou art worthy of glory. You're worthy of praise. There is none like thee. We ask that you bless this precious woman of God as she bring forth the word this day, that it shall be planted upon good ground, Lord God. Restore, replenish, and refresh her and rejuvenate her for furtherance of thy kingdom work. We'll be careful to give you glory, honor, and praise for all the done and what you're yet to do, Lord God. Open up our spiritual mind, ears, and hearts right now, Lord God, so we may receive it. In Jesus' name, we pray and thank you, Lord God, for all things. Things. Amen and amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to read verses 1 through 7 this morning. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. And once again, I'm utilizing my little toy this morning, the Accordance Bible uh, software. Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verses 1 through 7. I'm reading from the King James. I'm reading from the King James because there's a couple of words that I'm going to define in Greek if we have time. I'm going to try to get through this as expeditiously as possible. But it says, Be ye therefore followers of God 
and walk in love, as their children, rather, and walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all, I probably could have stopped right there in verses 1 and 2, but let me go on. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger nor unclean person, nor covetous man, nor idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Let's start right here in verse number 4. Let's just pause in uh, Ephesians 5, verses 1 through 4. Let's stick there because I want to deal um, a little bit more with conversations than I did last night. So let's go to Ephesians. Let's put a pause, stick a pen <laughs> in uh, verse number 4. So my subject this morning is uh, the love walk, the love walk. I'm going to say this because my brother-in-law said this years ago, my brother-in-law, uh, Sidney, said this about his church, Evergreen. The church is alive. It's worth the drive. Uh, one of the things my brother-in-law said about Evergreen Ministries is I love my church uh, because of their love walk. I love Evergreen. I love Pastor Lady Anderson because I recognize their love walk. That's my auntie now. I, le- I recognize their love walk, and and are honored to be a part of their lives. Growing up, I never would have thought that I'd be uh, as as connected as I am, but this is what my brother-in-law says about his ministry. I love my church because of their love walk. So the love walk is my subject this morning. Walking in love is a choice. And in order to have healthy relationships, somebody say it is necessary for us to choose love. It's necessary for us to choose unconditional love. And if you ever forget what love is supposed to look like, just take a trip to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. We're not going to read it this morning, but I said last night, that's my go-to verse for when I need to be reminded of what love is supposed to look like. Somebody say love does have a look. It's a choice, but it has a look. This is what love looks like. Love is not just what we say. Somebody say it's what it does. And so when we talk about walking in love, what does it mean? And we're talking to believers this morning. And as believers, we let our light shine for the glory of God so that we, by our lifestyle, can encourage someone else to get to know Jesus. So this is why it's important. This is why uh, Paul writes to the churches and he writes to believers because it's our lifestyle that is going to encourage it. Two things are going to happen based on how we live. We're either going to encourage somebody else to come to Christ or we're going to deter them from from coming to Christ. You don't want to be a stumbling block for someone else coming to Christ. And so what does it mean for Christians? to walk in love this morning? What does it mean for believers to walk in love? What does it mean for you and I to walk in love this morning? Well, uh, uh, to walk in love is to have a biblical mindset. And our second uh, session on this series that we're doing, Real Relationship Goals, (laughs) we said it starts with God. And so in order to have a biblical mindset, you've got to know the Bible, and you also have to be in a relationship with the source. And so to walk in love is to have a biblical mindset, one focused on obeying God by following the example of Christ, willingly giving ourselves each day to God and those in our sphere of influence. Who are those in our sphere of influence? Those in our community, those in our local church, those in our family, ladies and gentlemen, those that we work with every day, those that we uh, serve, those that work under us. This is willingly giving ourselves every day to God and to those in our sphere of influence. This is a faith that must be exercised and lived out. Somebody say the love walk this morning. As children, you know, growing up, our parents were our first role models. 
And even as adults, we still mimic some of their behaviors. We mimic some of their characteristics. We mimic some of the ways they did things. And children often mimic and copy the behavior of their parents, the way we talk, the way we act, you know, the way we engage with other people, even the way we handle money. I said this on last night. The way we do things, the way children respond, the way children behave, the way children handle issues, even relationships, that you can often go back to the way their parents handled relationships. Oftentimes, mannerism is learned behavior. The question I want to ask parents this morning is what are you teaching your children? You know, in mental health, oftentimes we see children twice a month, but then, and we're trying to redirect or help them build different skills. But what you do when the children have to go back home and they're learning skills that adversely affect their life. Come on, somebody. When they're in an environment that is not healthy for them emotionally or spiritually. So thereby, ladies and gentlemen, we should be cultivating, and I keep using that word cultivate because I love it. We, we should be cultivating an environment of our home where children have no problem following our lead. We should be cultivating a healthy Christian environment where our children follow our lead. When they go to school, watch this. Some of the things that the teachers are seeing in school is because the child is seeing it at home. (laughs) So children are going to model the behavior of their parents, ladies and gentlemen. So let's look at this word followers in the text. Somebody say followers this morning. Followers in the text. Let's go back to verse number one. Verse number one, be ye, King James, therefore followers of God. Underline or highlight followers. Somebody say followers this morning. This word followers in the text is a word that is called uh, mamites and, um, or, or mamites. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it means to mimic in other words. It means to be an imitator. It, it means to be a follower, ladies and gentlemen. It means to imitate somebody. So the scripture is telling us, be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. In other words, we are to follow or mimic our father. We are adopted into the family. Watch this. We are adopted into the family. We are joint heirs with Christ. So we are supposed to mimic uh, the, 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 the characteristics of our father. There's a song that came out some time ago, and the song says, uh, Jesus, all I want is to be like you. The lyrics say, Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> all I want is to be like you. Let me see if I can find it. Mister. I believe Mr. Alex is working this morning. We're going to see if we can get that on. Jesus, all I want is to be like you, and I know People have a problem with Hill song, but we're going to play it this morning. Jesus, all I want is to be like you. And so I didn't get a lot of likes on that particular quote, and some would say they don't want to have to go through what Jesus went through. They don't want to have to deal with what Jesus dealt with. Jesus was one who had no sin. He was perfect. However, the Bible says uh, if we're going to rank, uh, that, that suffer, we have to understand that suffering is a part of the life of the believer. But Jesus lets us know that in this life you will have tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. If, in, order, if you're gonna, in order to reign with me, you're going to have to suffer with me. So we're going to deal with some stuff. We're going to deal with persecution. We're going to deal with the fact that we are believers and not everybody's going to agree with us. We're going to have to deal with those things. But the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, be imitators or mimic pattern our lives after that of our father because he deals with us as children he deals with us as children ladies and gentlemen the scripture says as dear children and what does this mean in the same way as as children mimic the father their earthly father who loved them we are to mimic our father who created us his characteristics and you can find them in galatians chapter 5 where it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Holy Spirit produces love. Holy Spirit produces uh, 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 faithfulness and, and, and uh, what is it, uh, self-control. I'm not, let me go to Galatians chapter 5. <laughs> Galatians 5 and 22. Galatians 5 and 22. These are the characteristics that Holy Spirit produces 
in the life of the believer. So because Holy Spirit produces these, these characteristics in the life of the believer, then, ladies and gentlemen, it should not be, as we talked about last night, hard to love unconditionally because when this love it, this the love that Holy Spirit produces is a supernatural love. Let me say that again. It, it, it's not hard to really love and demonstrate, and, and watch this, demonstrate what we see in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7, when we are filled with Holy Spirit, because this love is a supernatural love. It is a supernatural love. It is a love that is produced by Holy Spirit. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Against such there is no law. Let me share a little uh, commentary uh, from the New Bible Commentary regarding love. The one who called the Galatians in grace called them to exercise the rights and enjoy the blessings of freedom. Paul knows, however, that freedom can be turned into license, and so he must make crystal clear that we are the lofty, that clear what are the lofty obligations of those who have been freed. In this passage in Galatians, the apostle goes into some detail as he describes both the abuse of freedom and its right use. Both the abuse of freedom and its right use. Freedom is abused when it becomes an excuse to indulge in sinful behavior. I need somebody to write that down. Freedom is abused when it becomes an excuse to indulge in sin. Uh, in the sinful nature. Paul is very specific about the behavior or the conduct that, that we're supposed to demonstrate. But he taught, watch this now, all of the behavior that we demonstrate, ladies and gentlemen, whether good or bad, it, it, it goes back to our love walk. It goes back to our love walk. Do we love the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves? If we do, ladies and gentlemen, then we'll serve one another in love. Paul makes it clear what is the right use of this freedom. We are free, and whom the Son says free is free indeed. So Paul makes it clear that the right use of freedom is to serve one another in love. So as families, as we're dealing with relationships, ladies and gentlemen, not just our uh, uh, biological family, but our spiritual family, listen, the freedom that we have, we are not to abuse that freedom, but we are to use that freedom to serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Somebody said a love walk this morning. The love walk, love walk, love walk. So the qualities, watch this now. The fruit of the Spirit consists primarily of attitudes and actions that enhance relationship. Let me say that again for those in the back of the room. The fruit of the Spirit primarily exists or consists, rather, of attitudes and actions that enhance personal relationship. One more time, repetition is the mother of learning. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit, if you look at it, every word in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 through 24, it those terms love and joy and, and peace and faithfulness, ladies and gentlemen, and faith and, and, and uh, kindness and patience, ladies and gentlemen, all those self-control, all those terminologies, every word is going to enhance your relationship with other people because these words are Holy Spirit produced. These are supernatural. And so thereby, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest way to enhance your relationship with other people is to develop an intimate relationship with the Father. The greatest way to enhance our relationship with other people is to make sure that we have an intimate relationship relationship with the Father. When we have an intimate relationship with the Father, he'll enable us to love supernaturally. 
And so as we talk about mimicking the Father, ladies and gentlemen, what are some of the things that the Father did for us? He was forgiving towards us. He gave up his only begotten son, ladies and gentlemen. His love for us was sacrificial. Come on, somebody. He was gracious, and he forgave us. Watch this now. And this forgiveness had nothing to do with anything that we did. This forgiveness had nothing to do with anything that we did. So I said on last night in Bible study that you and I forgiving other people, watch this, it doesn't have to have anything to do with anything they do. They don't have to ask for us to forgive them. Forgiveness should not be something that is forced. Love should not be something that is forced. Jesus, watch this, how did the Lord forgive us uh, while we were still sinners unconditionally? So when we, if we're going to mimic our Father, if we're going to pattern our, our, our walk, our conduct, our lives, the way we live after the Father, then our forgiveness of other people is not based on conditions. Our forgiveness of even if you don't stay in the relationship, forgiveness is not based on what they do. Even if the rela- you, you, you remove yourself from the relationship, forgiveness is not an option because the Lord forgave us, and Romans 5 and 8 says unconditionally, while we were yet sinners. And so God's love for us was unconditional, ladies and gentlemen, and his love is sacrificial. So if we're going to have healthy relationships, we got to be willing to give up something. And sometimes that means giving up unhealthy emotions. Because holding on, go back and look at my Facebook Live from Monday. We emptied the bag of every symptom that hinders healthy relationships. Everything I pulled out of that bag on Monday was symptoms of pride and so when we let go of pride we get rid of unforgiveness we get rid of jealousy we get rid of envy we get rid of bitterness we get rid of resentment we get rid of fear we get rid of rebellion we listen we're more open to apologizing come on somebody what would the, the the number one killer of relationships is pride it's pride so the Lord is, is uh, Paul writes, he says, let's go to, he says, walk in love. Let's go back. Let me go back to Ephesians 5. Walk in love. Somebody say, walk, walk, walk. <laughs> That's a little song on TikTok. And so, and walk in love. What does that word walk represent? That word walk, I just said it. It represents our conduct, it represents the way we live. It represents our behavior, ladies and gentlemen. And the Bible says walk in love, ladies and gentlemen. Everything we do should be summed up in love. How I treat other people love. How I respond to relationships love. If all of us remember that God gave up so much for us, then we should be willing to give up negative attitudes for other people. Some things you're just going to have to let go for the sake of peace. Some things you're going to have to just let go for the sake of love, ladies and gentlemen. If you love me, then stop fighting and debating with me. Walk in love, ladies and gentlemen. And and Paul reiterates this word, walk, several times in Ephesians because he says in Ephesians 4.1, he says, walk or live worthy. In Ephesians 4.17, he says, walk not or don't live like the Gentiles or the non-Jewish individuals. Ephesians 5 and 8, he says, walk as children or live conduct yourselves as children of light. Ephesians 5.15, he says, live or walk circumspectly. And so, ladies and gentlemen, when we have a love walk, then we'll have a love talk. Come on, somebody. (laughs) When we have a love walk, then, ladies and gentlemen, everything we do, the way we live our lives is centered around our love for the Lord and our love for other people. Even if, uh, as Christ died for us, and we didn't do anything to deserve it, we love even if they don't do anything to deserve it. We love even if they never say, I'm sorry. We love even if they don't fix what they did wrong. We love even if they never come back and and resolve the issue. We love. Love is not based on, on, on conditions. True love, supernatural love, is not based on conditions. 
And so it says in verse number 2, Ephesians 5, somebody says it's not based on conditions. It's not conditional. If I have to do something in order for you to love me, then that's not unconditional love. If 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 I have to, uh, and one thing a woman of God <laughs> said recently, if I got to pay to be in a relationship with you, if I got to pay dues or fees to be a part of what you're doing or be in a relationship with you, then that's not love then maybe that's not the relationship. That's not love if, if you're only going to care about me when I'm doing everything that you want. And so thereby, ladies and gentlemen, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, as Christ also has loved us, and watch what it says, and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. I, w- I want to read that verse from the Amplified, verse number two. Let's look at that, verse number two, in the Amplified this morning. Ephesians chapter five and verse number two. Somebody say the love walk this morning, the love walk, piggybacking off our subject from last night. Ephesians five and two. Let's look at it from the Amplified version of the Bible this morning. Well, first of all, let me go back. It says, therefore, be imitators. I just said it. The Amplified often gives us the Greek definition of words or the Hebrew. Therefore, be imitators of God. It says in the Amplified, copy him and follow his example. I just gave you some examples of what our Father does. That's just a few. Matter of fact, Galatians 5 gives us those examples as well. As well, beloved children, imitate their Father and walk in love. What does it mean? esteeming and delighting in one another. This thing is reciprocal. But even if the person, other person doesn't do it, as believers, we're obligated to. And walk in love, esteeming and delighting in one another, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a slain offering and sacrifice to God for you so that it became a sweet fragrance. It became a sweet uh, fragrance, ladies and gentlemen. And so thereby, ladies and gentlemen, as Christ in the same way that Christ loved us, in the same pattern that Christ demonstrated his love towards us, we are to copy or imitate that. We are to copy or imitate that. Remember, Christ's love was sacrificial. True love makes sacrifices for each other. Genuine love, and I said this on last night, about making sacrifices for each other, we are willing to give up something. Watch this, even negative emotions for the people that we love. We are willing to sit back and demonstrate humility for the, for, listen, for, for the sake of those that we love. We are willing to step back and not be so opinionated for the sake of those that we love. Ladies, wives, come on, somebody. We don't have to talk so much. We ought to humble ourselves and remember that a wise woman builds. So when the words come out, they should be words that build our husbands. When the words come out, they should be words that build the people that we love. We should never be careful about words that tear other people down. And so thereby, Chris, watch this now. We're going to talk about words in just a moment. True love makes sacrifices. Jesus gave himself for us voluntarily. Jesus listen, substituted himself for us. He paid a debt he didn't owe because we owed a debt he, that we could not pay. Listen, a sweet-smelling savor means that what Christ did, listen, was satisfying to God. It was satisfying to God. And so just like Jesus made sacrifices, ladies and gentlemen, any sacrifice that we make for other people, number one, it should not be forced. We should not, watch this, you should not have to buy me a car, pass the sellers for me to love you unconditionally. You, you, you should not have to do, do everything, listen, even those things that I ask you to do, if you don't do it all, that shouldn't affect my love walk towards you. It should not be forced, single ladies, come, come on, where the single ladies? It should not be forced. You should not have to to give up something that you're not ready to give up if he really loves you. Talking about real relationship goals. 
You, you should not have to give up something that you're not ready for. You should not have to give up your your innocence just to, just to prove that you love somebody because if they really love you, they'll wait for you. Look, listen, they'll say, I do. Come on, somebody. And so thereby love, listen, this sacrificial love, listen, the sacrifice that we should make should not be forced. It's something it's not, that we're not forced to do. It is acceptable to God. It is acceptable to God as what the sacrifice that Jesus made was satisfactory, a sweet-smelling savor. The sacrifices that we make should be acceptable to God. Somebody say acceptable, acceptable, acceptable. The love walk this morning should not be forced. Anything that has to be forced is not unconditional love. So let me take, and then it could turn into control and manipulation, which can be witchcraft if we're not careful. So the love walk is what we're talking about this morning. We're going to get into um, words in just a minute, and that's why how I want to close. But we're live at 5. It's 5.30 already on WHLJ, 97.5 FM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. You can also join us online this morning at Foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com. And you can also join us on the conference call at 267-807-9611, access code 266-590. We are in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 through 7, piggybacking our Bible study on last night. i uh, just going to go a little bit different way uh, and deal more with um, how we, uh, our communication. Our communication. Let's go on down into text. Just a little bit, uh, and we're going to kind of just move on through this. Uh, let's talk about verse number three. Verse number three, Ephesians chapter five, verse three. I wrote these down last night, so these are some of the things that get in the way of genuine love for other people, love for the Father. It, it, they get in the way of of love, and also Paul says people that do these things. Well, let's read it, Ephesians five and three. But fornication, which is any sex, out sex, and we, we said sexual intimacy. We said intimacy last night, but it's not intimacy, it's sin. And so the scripture says, but fornication, which is whoredom, sleeping around, fornication is adultery because the person you're having sex with is not your spouse, uh, incest fornication of sex with somebody in your family, uh, molesting children, sex with somebody that you're not married to, lewdness, uncleanness. This is uh, the Greek word for fornication is pornea. Ladies and gentlemen, we should not even be engaging in pornography or going to the strip club for your bachelor party. Come on, somebody. We shouldn't be engaging in that. So fornication, any sexual, sexual sexual sin, sex outside of marriage. And then it says, but fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness. Covetousness, what do we mean or what does the scripture mean by covetous? Covetousness. First of all, it's the Tenth Commandment, thou shalt not covet. And it's an illicit lust to have that which is not yours. An illicit lust. Not only to have that which is not yours, but to try, but to have something that actually belongs to somebody else. This is covetousness, or it can also be another form. It's a form of greed. It's a form of greed. And so Paul says, watch this, he says for believers and for those of us in the body, those of us that are family members, those of us that are church family, it says let this not be named among you as becoming saints. Don't let this kind of stuff be your reputation. Don't let people in the street committee be saying these things about you. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. People not should, should not be saying these things about us. And, and, and here's a commentary, new, new Bible commentary says, live in the truth that is patterned in Jesus Christ. The new Bible commentary, live in the truth that is patterned by Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. Live in the truth that, well, watch this, where Jesus is our greatest role model, ladies. So it says, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient. Any conversation which is not convenient. What does this word convenient mean? Any t- conversation that has no value. In, in any conversation that is, not, that is improper. 
Any conversation, any uh, talking that does not fit your character as a believer. Any conversation that is unbecoming of us as saints, it says neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient. Paul says in in verse number four, he says, let's get back to my place. He says, but rather giving thanks. So we're going to pause. We're going to, as Pastor Sister King would say, we're going to land right here. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, not proper, unbefitting a saint, but rather giving thanks. Let, let me share, uh, uh, break down these terms that Paul uh, outlines in, in uh, verses uh, 3 and 4. It says, let these things not be named among you. This should not be our reputation. Listen, watch this. I know you've said that you don't care what people think about you. But as believers, we should care what people think about us. While we, 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 we live our lives and, you know, we live in a way that pleases God, people don't need to be in our, you know, intimate, most personal business. But when we are, uh, 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 our lives should be such a way that it represents Christ. We should care about our reputation. We should care about our name. We should care uh, enough about our name to pay our bills on time. That's, that's reputation, ladies and gentlemen. And so it says, as becoming saint. Watch this now. Watch this. Listen, we, watch this. <sighs> Somebody asked a question. Uh, uh, this question. Is sin in the life of a, of a believer different from sin in the life of an unsaved person? The answer, yes. A deeper answer is worse. <laughs> Sin in the life of somebody who says, I'm following Jesus, is worse. Sinners, unbelievers, when we were not saved, we did what we did. We weren't saved. But those of us who are believers, we should watch this. The way we live, the things we do, the way we talk, uh, the way we behave, even the way we handle relationships should not be the way we did it before we knew Jesus. The way we deal with family, and I said this on Sunday, that believers do not respond to relationships. We do not respond to things the way we did before we got saved. Before we got saved, we didn't have a problem telling lies. Before we got saved, we had no problem listen, fornicating. Before we got saved, we had no problem listen, uh, uh, being dishonest. Before we got saved, we had no problem listen, uh, being, uh, 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 trying to uh, uh, what, cheat and lie and steal. We had no problem listen, not speaking to one another for months but as believers these things are not becoming of us my sister and my brother <laughs> these things are not becoming what does it mean filthy filthy we're talking about conversation we're gonna wrap with this part filthiness obscene filthy talking dirty jokes these little uh adjectives four-letter words and i know i literally hear some leaders say it's nothing wrong with a cuss word every now and then but when we look at this term, the definition of filthiness, filthy talk, dirty four-letter words, any form of gutter language, that's filthiness. Any form of gutter, <laughs> gutter language. Let's, listen, the Greek definition of this word, ladies and gentlemen, you might be need to work on that speech, Greek I'm not going to pronounce the word, but it's obscenity or indecency. Obscenity or indecency. Filthiness, ladies and gentlemen. Filthiness or foolish talking. What is foolish talking? The speech of those who are, do not have wisdom. The speech, a foolish uh, speech would be vain talk, silly conversations. And I asked the question in church one Sunday morning, why is it that people seem to use profanity with every other word because they have a limited vocabulary. Why do people cuss all the time? Because they have a limited vocabulary. You want to build your vocabulary? Read John 3.16. You want to build your vocabulary? Listen, study Psalm 23. You want to build your vocabulary? Study the Beatitudes. You want to build your vocabulary? Change your vocabulary? I have an app on my phone that helps me uh, enhance my vocabulary. Instead of using 
simple, regular words. It helps me use more weighty words. Come on, somebody. And so foolish talking, the speech of those who are who do not have wisdom. Our speech is supposed to be clean. What we say as believers is supposed to have meaning. I said this last night that, that you know, someone kind of, you know, challenged me, and they said, you're always talking about the Lord. What they was really trying to say is, you know, can we talk about something else sometimes? And I do understand that I get it. I get it. But like I said last night, that when you really love somebody, you do talk about them all the time. When you when you are you have when you love and have an intimate relationship, I talk about the Lord more than I talk about my husband. <laughs> but I, and my, I love my husband. But if I'm going to love him the way I should, it starts with intimacy with my father. And so, I, I, yeah, I, I know I, I, I talk about other things, but I love when you really love somebody, ladies and gentlemen. That's who you're going to talk about. People know who you love. Listen, people know what's in our heart by the words that come out of our mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so watch this. When there's filthiness, and foolish talking and telling all kind of jokes, then people know what's in our heart by the words that come out of our mouth. What is coarse jesting? Humor, and in this commentary says humor has its place as long as it's clean. I love clean comedy. I love clean comedy. You you go to a comedy show and and and, and this person is, you know is cussing. I can't stand that. I will listen as believers. We should not even want to sit in that environment. Can I say that again for those in the back of the room? As believers, we should not be comfortable sitting in the comedy club where every word that comes out of the comedian is a cuss word. Every, it, 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 it should not be funny. I like clean comedy. I love to laugh. I love comedy. And so any, any, any coarse jesting, dirty stories, and one thing that gets under my skin, I don't mind jokes, but I don't like jokes that are not true stories. We can tell funny stories without lying. Let me help somebody this morning. We can tell funny stories without lying. So Ephesians, going back to Ephesians 4.29, it says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. And this word corrupt, you might want to write this down. When that word corrupt is broken down, it is, those, those words are rotten. They are putrid. They are foul. They are rank. That no rotten, putrid, foul, or rank, no stinking communication proceed out of your mouth. I thought about this because Sister King and I was talking after Bible study about Bible study on last night. And and some things started coming to us after, you know, some things would come to you after Bible study. And I thought about what we shared about uh, Aaron and Miriam on yesterday. Numbers 12, real quick. I thought about uh, what we shared about them. And, and and what they said, their, their conversation about not only their brother but their leader, and they, they talked about his wife and, and they talked about, you know, his leadership. And they said, had the Lord indeed spoken only to Moses, has he not also spoken to us, ladies and gentlemen? We got to be careful about uh, our communication, our conversation. And I reminded them last night that the Lord is keeping records of everything. As Sister King reminded us last night that every idle word, we're going to have to give an account. Every idle word that proceeds from our mouth, we're going to have to give an account. So the Bible says, let no, and watch this. Do you realize that every argument is being recorded? Every conversation is being recorded? Every word is being recorded in heaven? Let no corrupt, rotten, putrid, foul, rank communication proceed out of your mouth. This is not becoming of us as saints. This is this is not that's not for you, my, that, that's not for you. It may be okay for somebody else, but it's it, it, it's it's not funny to us. Telling jokes, um, um, uh, uh, talking, uh, and 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 flirting. Flirtation was brought out last night, especially when you're flirting with somebody that's married to somebody else. 
when you're flirting with another man's wife or another woman's husband, these flirtatious uh, comments, ladies and gentlemen, should not proceed out of our mouth. Derogatory conversations, negative gossip, listen, a drama, all this gutter, all this negativity should not proceed out of our mouth. And I was sharing with, with, with uh, uh, someone the other day about what divisive communication looks like. Devi- or divisive conversation or slash communication. Divisive conversation is any communication that undermines or destroys relationships. Let me say that again. Divisive uh, co- communication or conversation are those words that or those uh, uh, communication that undermines or destroys the relationship. We're talking about the love walk this morning. We're dealing with real, we're, we're developing, we're talking about real relationship goals. We're developing healthy relationships with other people, but it starts with an intimate relationship with God. So this, at least other people might not think so, but we believe that it starts with intimacy with God. And so divisive communication is fed by anger, symptom of pride, bitterness, a symptom of pride, selfishness, a symptom of pride, criticism, a symptom of pride, dishonesty, a symptom of pride. Pastor Sellers asked the question, why do people lie? Pride. Lying tongue is a symptom of pride. Why is this is divisive communication, but communication that unifies, that communication which is hot, honest, open, and transparent. Honest, open, and transparent. Let the result of divisive communication is sickness and disease in the relationship. This is why your marriage is struggling. Anger, bitterness, selfishness, criticism, and dishonesty. As we And, and I got to go, but I got to share this before I go. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. I got to go, but gotta, I want to share this real quick. Genesis Chapter 3 is a good example. This actually is the first area of communication breakdown. This is a communication breakdown in the family, ladies and gentlemen. This is a a severe uh, communication breakdown, somebody say, in the family. I shared this with someone uh, just the other day. And so as the woman of God, first the woman of God, but first the woman first talking to the serpent and he's communicating with her and basically trying to twist what the Lord had, had uh, the Lord trying to get her to twist or, or trying to undermine what the Lord has said. But this is the thing. This is the thing. Uh, it says in verse number seven, and the eyes after they ate, after they partook, the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden. And the Lord called out to Adam and said unto him, Where are you? Instead of Adam saying where he was, he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. This is what the Lord says. He said, who told, Adam says, I hid because I was naked. Adam hid because he knew he disobeyed God. He said, who who told you you were naked? And this is what the Lord says, has thou eaten of the tree where I commanded thee that thou should not eat? Where are you? And instead of answering the question, directly he said i heard your voice in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked one way to hurt a relationship is to try to deceive somebody one way to hurt a relationship is when you're asked a question you fail to answer the question directly you fail to respond directly to the question that was asked where are you i was afraid because i was naked but where you at is the question that I asked. <laughs> Not that the Lord didn't know. So thereby, ladies and gentlemen, kids, listen, this, the issue with communication started in Genesis 3. 
So the result of device of communication is sickness and disease in the relationship. But conversation that brings unity, ladies and gentlemen, conversation that is motivated in love, conversation that let us know we have a love walk for real, is when I'm willing to praise your best efforts, is when I encourage you on a consistent basis, is when I'm honest, open, and transparent. Listen, even if I have to confront some things, I would do it gently and I'll do it in love. Conversation that brings brings unity that demonstrates a love walk is when I trust you, is when I'm kind to you, when I'm empathetic and consider. And watch this. Sometimes we have to consider that the person's personality is just different. Sometimes we have to recognize that this is, now you know God can change anybody, but there are moments that we have to recognize that, you know, this is their personality. The Holy Spirit will enable us sometimes, you know, with the gift of discernment of spirits to see that the way a person is acting has a deeper root. And so when you have a love walk, you're more understanding and empathetic, and you, 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 you rather deal with even if they demonstrate negative behavior, when you really love somebody, you, want it, you ask the Lord, Lord, what is the root issue here? What is the root of the matter? The person has to be honest open and transparent with the root issue if they want to heal because you cannot heal from it if you don't deal with it. And so thereby, listen, humility. So these are the things that unify and bring blessings to the relationship. And Psalm 133 lets us know that where there is unity, a blessing is commanded by the Lord. And so we're going to stop right here. And Paul lets us know in this particular scripture to walk in love. And to walk in love, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to go through what I shared with them real quick last night. We got to be kind and we, listen, I want to encourage somebody. I'm noticing signs of relapse because we're saying we're not going to, we're letting bitterness go. We're letting pride go. We're letting all these things go. But I'm noticing signs of relapse. Relapse begins in addiction, not when you start using the drugs. Relapse begins when you start craving the drug, when you start craving the substance. So thereby, ladies and gentlemen, do, I, I would encourage you, don't continue to meditate on what, what's wrong. Continue to meditate on, on those things as Philippians says, those things that are true, those things that are just, those things that are noble. Come on, think on these things. Listen, where you put your focus is where you're going to allow yourself to go. But think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you. And be kind and forgive and be humble. That's that's the second thing. This is our love walk. When we go, if we're going to walk in love, number one, we've got to be kind and forgiving, as Ephesians 4.32 says. Number two, we've got to be humble, according to Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 through 8. I'm going to let you read the scripture. Number three, we've got to be willing to cultivate harmony in our home. And we've got to be willing to cultivate harmony in whatever environment that we're in. Read First Peter chapter 3, verse 8. We've got to recognize that suffering is part of our journey. First Peter 2 and 21 and then we got to demonstrate sacrificial unconditional love the same love that jesus demonstrated towards us is the love that we are to demonstrate towards other people let me read first john three sixteen. this is how we know what love is jesus christ laid down his life for us how will men know that you are my disciples by the love that you have for one another. How is that love demonstrated? By being willing to make sacrifices for each other. That goes all the way down to letting go of some feelings. Being willing to make sacrifices for each other. Somebody said, I will not relapse. I'm not going to revert back to old behaviors. I'm not going to revert back to old habits. I'm not going to revert back to old hurts. I am really genuinely moving forward. But be careful, ladies and gentlemen. Walk in love means to have a biblical mindset. Focusing on obeying God and following the example of Jesus Christ. Pastor Wright. Well, that's all I have time for today. I pray this minister to you, the love walk today. We are doing our part to develop healthy relationships in 2023. Pastor Wright, with a few minutes that we have, take us in with a word of prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt towards. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Lord God, help us to walk like Jesus walked. Help us to practice our love walk every day. Help us, Lord God, to resemble you, to mimic you, to follow you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we repent of every time we got it wrong, every time we went astray, every time we went left and you wanted us to go right. We repent of it right now, Lord God. We repent, Lord God, of the words that came out of our mouth that tore down rather than building up. Lord God, help us to cultivate love, peace, happiness, forgiveness, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord God, to possess all of the fruit of the Spirit, help us to walk in the Spirit so that we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Father, we come today submitting our will to your will. We come today, Lord God, saying, lead us and we will follow. Father God, here we are. We empty out to you today, God. We empty out the garbage. We empty out the jesting. We empty out the foolish talking, Lord God, and the worldly walking. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come today, Lord God, interceding for all that are in need of prayer. We uh, cast all of our uh, cares upon you, knowing that you care for us. And we say thank you today. We lift up all that are sick, God, and we speak to that condition. We command all men of sickness and disease to flee our bodies, our hearts, our minds now in Jesus' name. We declare by the stripes of Jesus that we are healed. We are delivered. We are set free. We are made whole. And we say thank you, God. We come today, God, calling on you as Jehovah Shalom on behalf of all those that have lost loved ones, God. I lift up my family this week, Lord God, and all families all over the world who have suffered a loss, Lord God, whether it be natural causes, whether it be accidents, whether it be shooting, stabbings, whatever uh, caused the, the loss of life, Lord God. And we just ask for you to comfort today. Strengthen today, Lord God. Build us up where we're torn down. We ask, God, that you bring the families closer together and closer to you. Give us that peace, God, that surpasses all understanding in Jesus' name. We come today, God, lifting up every sinner everywhere, asking you, Lord God, to save, to sanctify, to fill with the Holy Ghost. God, do it in Jesus' name. And, God, all these things that our ears have heard and our heart have felt on today, let them not be named um, among us, Lord God, as becoming saints. Help us to lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, Father, in Jesus' name. We would continue, God, to give you the glory. We would continue to give you the honor, and we would continue to give you the praise. We lift up this your servant before you today, God. We pray, God, that you will restore all the virtue that have gone out of her. We thank you for Upper Room Ministries. Thank you for Command Your Morning. Thank you for Pastor Sellers and Dr. Sellers. Bless their works, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Bless all the ministries represented on this call, those in the in the listening audience. I thank you, God, for the House of God churches everywhere they're established. Lord God, make us all one, even as you and your son Jesus is one, and we will continue to walk in love. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And we can win this battle against the world only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. If you believe that this morning, I encourage you to declare, I win. I am uh, victorious. I'm choosing to walk in love. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. Those on the call, please remain on the line. 